whatever you want to do. Okay, you just press the arrow. Wait a minute. Yeah. Which one? You want to go down. Okay, you want this one, Pedro. Don't forget this one. Okay, well, that's the one that goes sideways. Yeah, <laughs> Just pointing at you. Morning, everyone. Thanks for the opportunity to, to tell you a little bit about our Ghana project and what we're trying to do with empowering <laughs> the community to understand what we're doing in the project. What the project is all about what are the benefits that they're going to receive from it, why should you conserve biodiversity, etc. When we started with the project, we felt that there was a communication gap between ourselves and the people that we were talking to. Although people like the Nkosi and others speak pretty good English, when we started using technical terms like biodiversity, biodiversity conservation, sustainability, talking through interpreters, we were finding that each interpreter was giving a different message. So it's a real problem because you do have to be very careful in dealing with a community like ours, not to build up expectations that cannot be met and all that. On the other hand, if they say, which they said to us, that they would like to see uh, a livestock management project put on the ground, they would like to see a tourism, a community-based tourism project uh, uh, put on the ground, we had to say to them things like, well, if you want to bring international tourists to this place, <clears throat> you will really need to conserve your biodiversity and maintain the integrity of the countryside. People will not come to look at moldy old cows, they will come to look at beautiful country like we have got here. This is a glimpse into the project area. It's between Colford and Riverside, for those of you who know who that part of Natal. It's 7,000 hectares in extent. It was expropriated by the Transcar government and allocated to the community. And what we're trying to do now is to implement a scientifically based uh, management plan that will both conserve the biodiversity and benefit the community. First slide, please. So this is at one of our <coughs> is in Bezel. The way that we uh, give advice to them is that we give them alternatives. We say, which way do you want to go? If you want to go that way, these are your alternatives. We write a decision state for them, laying out the pros and cons of all the possibilities. And the, on special occasions, then of course he will bring uh, representatives of the whole tribe together. And this is what's happening here. And these are our dancing girls. We're very proud of our dancing girls because they win all the cups. Next, please. <laughs> That's Nkosi Baleni. The whole idea of the Mgana project came from Nkosi Sidoi, his father. And it was Nkosi Sidoi who <coughs> said, these 7,000 hectares that we have got here are going to be used only for business and employment opportunities, not for settlement. So we're in this remarkable situation where we've got virtually untouched land, grasslands in top condition, wonderful forests. They actually stayed for us, but Daft didn't know that they were proclaimed state forests. They were proclaimed in 1904, and they're in absolutely magnificent condition. Yellowwood's this side, and apparently Hilton talked about that yesterday. So this is Nkosi now explaining to the people what is going to happen next, please. <coughs> this is looking from the project area, within the project area, across the valley to the settlement there. That mountain that you can see on that side there is part of Nsikeni Nature Reserve. Uh, the, the river down in front of us is Kungununu. And this is part of the timber plantation that was established about 10 years ago and is now beginning to bring in revenue for the community. Next, please. 
we did an, a survey of the area and produced a management plan which is now in its first review and this gives you an indication of the three primary zones. In front of you here is a part of uh, Kawoha State Forest reclaimed all those t that time ago. The grasslands, most of which will be used for the livestock management project, but some of which will be in the nature reserve and then the timber plantation there. Numerically, the timber plantation is 1,300 hectares, something like that. The, the, the grazing area, 3,500, something like that, and 1,500 the little nature reserve that they want to uh, proclaim. Next, please. That's a, a map of the zones. The green, the pale olive green on this side is the nature reserve. The dark green areas are the forest. Uh, the middle green areas are the timber plantation and the white are the grasslands that will be the grazing zone. Next, please. And that's another view of the project area. Uh, showing some of the specials that we've got, like the cycads on the left here, Sarkad and Kevlatus galenkii, uh, three species of proteas, and it's across the valley, which is outside of the area, is a forest. So we decided, next please, we decided that because this is such a huge challenge for the community, they have to eventually take over full command without access to people like ourselves as advisors. We've got to try and equip them to be able to do that. Next, please. So we have started our mentoring program, and we've begun with the field rangers. There are half a dozen of them only, and sometimes other members of the, uh, the team come to our talks. There's Drummond Densham, who's sitting there, who talks about the birds, and Isabel Johnson uh, is teaching them how to identify plants. So what, next please. What is happening, that's the, the botanical session in, in motion. That's looking across to the Sukhini Nature Reserve over there. Next, please. This, we brought them in, the field rangers in, to the university. Next, please. They have been given formal lessons like this. How do you use a reference book? How do you identify a plant? or a bird, whatever, and they then have to go and do that themselves. Next, please. And this is one of the field rangers with uh, one of the specimens that he's brought in. And the interesting thing to me is that as a result of this, and uh, just a, around about a year that we've been uh, teaching them, they have identified is it 29 new bird species drumming. Something like, something like that, and something like 40 plants that were not previously recorded for the area. Mm -hmm. Next please. <coughs> so just to go back one moment about that specimen, <coughs> when we took them into the University Herbarium, the curator told them that their specimens were actually better quality than some second year students. <laughs> so not only are they learning that kind of stuff from us, but this is an example of the rehabilitation that is taking place within the project area. Last year that was Wattle Jungle, which has now been filled with funding from the Department of Agriculture. So they're learning all these kind of field operations, all of which are, of course, in the management plan. Next, please. And that's it from me. So we've got a little bit of time for questions. You can sit down, I'm sure you can answer in a minute. Okay, thank you. Uh, there, is there any, are there any questions for Dr. Greenbridge?